Welcome to Midnight Solar's Power Time. I'm John and this is Hank. And we got Tom Carpenter still over in Hawaii with the camera crew enjoying the weather. Not like what we got here. But what they're going to do is they're going to show you how to hook up an SPD or a surge protection device. And they're not going to stand out here in the rain like me. Ouch. You got it, Tom. We're here today in the water heater closet of an undisclosed location on the Kohala coast of the Big Island of Hawaii. And what we're going to do in here today is we are going to install a Midnight Solar SPD-300 surge protective device. This little critter was designed by our engineers to prevent harmful inducted surges, generally from nearby lightning strikes, from getting into your household circuitry and frying all your valuable electronics. And uh, the problem here that we come into is that we want to install this onto this electrical panel, which is, of course, flush mounted to the wall. Normally, if this was on an outside panel board, you could mount it externally to the box in such a way that it would not be inside the box but visible outside. Here, that's obviously not possible because it would be inside the wall. So what we've come up with is our SPD cut-in box. And what this guy does, a nice steel box that we are going to make a hole in the sheetrock here that I've already marked out and hopefully we'll insert this into the wall Then we're gonna have to go through and get into the inside of the electrical box there's a whole bunch of knockouts on this side which by the way are all unused now that indicates to you that you're pretty safe in going inside this piece of wall because for example up here all these knockouts are occupied by cables so you know that this section of wall is full of wires so you wouldn't cut it in up here because you know that you're going to hit wires and you're not going to be enough depth for this to go through the wall. This is made to go through a 2x4 stud wall, by the way. Uh, down at the bottom here, you've got some more conduits coming in. You might be able to put it down here, but in this case, the homeowner wanted it at eye level because he loves the blue LEDs on our surge arresters. He wants to be able to see them. So that's why it's going to go right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out having done our layout with a little sheetrock jab saw. We're going to Put that in place, give it a little bump, get it started, and then simply cut a nice hole in our sheetrock. Again, sheetrock's a very forgiving material to work with. There we go. That guy slides right in there. Now we're going to have to get from our conduit connection on the outside of this into our box. So in this case we have a convenient 2x4 here that we're going to have to go ahead and bore through so we can get to the knockout on the inside and uh, use it for the uh, connection. So we want to use our hole saw, come in here and have to go into this 2x4 to expose the side of the box. Okay, well we've cut our hole in the wall and we've gone ahead and gone through the 2x4 that's going up the wall right here so we can get the half inch knockout on the inside of the box and then into our main distribution box. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and assemble our SPD into its enclosure. You've got this little uh, L-shaped bracket that goes in here and that's what the SPD mounts to. Then that just goes right into the box, as you saw. You have a choice of four different conduit exits on either side, the bottom, and one in the back. In this case, we're going to use the one on the right-hand side and a right-angle adapter we give you with each, SP with each SPD cut-in box. And we're going to bring our conduit down. It's going to kind of loop down under and then come into our main box right about here where this black mark is. So we'll go ahead and put that together and be back in a second. Okay, well, we've got our surge protector assembled into its enclosure, and we've got the conduit attached to the enclosure ready to go into the wall. The uh, surge protector simply assembles onto the metal shelf here. The metal shelf is screwed into the bottom of the box with two screws. I would advise using a long Phillips head screwdriver so that you can come down from the top and it's at an angle 
flush with the top of the box and you'll be able to get that screw tightened down just fine. We've also assembled our metallic flex conduit. This comes with the cut-in box. You also get a right angle fitting and a straight fitting. The metallic conduit is important because you can't just run these wires bare inside the wall. That's non-code compliant and can't actually be dangerous. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and install it into the cut-in in the wall. But first, we've got to bring our conduit over and run the wires into our main disconnect panel. There we go. And then this just goes in. And the reason you need to leave a little loop of conduit is because you need to be able to flex that down. Put it into the opening. Turn it sideways a bit. And it sits in there just like that. Now we give you four very nice one inch stainless steel screws with each surge arrestor. I've also installed the provided sheetrock anchors into the wall. We give you four of those also. Okay, it's got that mounted. Now what we're going to do on the inside here is we're going to go ahead and install this uh, to this circuit breaker right here. The Midnight Solar Surge Protector does not have to be connected to a circuit breaker as it is an internally fused device. It could actually go straight to these main lugs here in the middle. But I'm going to do it this way because we've got a conveniently mounted 30 amp circuit breaker and a 30 amp breaker is just fine for connecting a surge protector like this up. But because we can't just take these wires and tuck them right into the circuit breaker holes, we're going to need to use a transition device and what we're going to use is this little tap made by Ilsco. And what we do with this is we turn this breaker off. We're going to back the wire out a bit. We're going to strip some more off the wire. This slides over the wire and it allows us a place to bring our wire in and then tighten the screw down on it. Okay, let's make a little room in here. Simply pull one of your wires out. You're going to strip it back about another half inch. Tough insulation. There we go. And we slide our ILSCO connector over that. Just like that. We put that right back into the circuit breaker where it came from. Tighten that back down. Okay, there's one just like that. And then the second one, do the same thing down here for leg one. Okay. Slide our connector over again. Go ahead and put them back. Okay, then we're just going to take our Leads from RSPD. Strip them back. Simply insert that into the ILSCO tap. Tighten her down. second one. Now because we've got a uh, ground wire, but we're going to actually connect it to the neutral, and the neutral of course is common with ground, we give you a white sleeve to simply slide over the edge of the wire. This is a piece of heat shrink tubing. You slide him on there, and that correctly identifies that as being allowed to be landed on the neutral bus bar. That's all there is to that. You go ahead and turn the circuit breaker back on and you can see that the two LEDs inside the box are indeed illuminated and uh, it's operating and ready to protect the house. All right, well, we've got our SPD installed in the wall. We're just putting our cover back on the panel board. 
And at this point, the uh, whole house system, both panels here and a couple of sub panels at the other end of the house, are now being well protected by this single surge protector against induced surges. The uh, thing with lightning surge arresters is you can't really ever have too many of them. Ultimately, you would have one at your service entrance uh, out at the street or where the utility comes into your house. It's a good idea to have one uh, at your distribution panel like this. And uh, if you have any other sub panels that are more than 100 or so feet away from these panels, it's not a good, not a bad idea to put one, uh, put one out there also. It just protects the whole system from induced surges from coming in from any other direction, which uh, it can do. I'm Tom Carpenter from Midnight Solar. Thank you very much.